Before I forget, do you have New Year's resolutions? Have you stuck to them? We're on day 27. Well, I don't really like failing, so the last few years I've stopped making New Year's resolutions. Uh, it's been going very good since. <laughs> You're sticking to it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My New Year's resolution was to have more animals, so hopefully in four weeks I get a puppy. <laughs> you, uh, to, to add to a quiet menagerie, or is that your first one? Pardon? Is that your first animal, or have you got a bit of a farm going on? No, I'm going to get a farm. I'm just starting. <laughs> So, and, and also, uh, uh, Kat, we had, uh, you're a cognitive psychology graduate, but you leave your car keys in the fridge on a fairly regular basis, having misplaced them, is that true? That has happened once. <laughs> um, I, do, I do forget a lot of things, uh, but I think it just helps in mindness, you know? Uh, I find them usually, you know, they say that people that are not very organized are actually more organized because once you, you know, the organized people, when they lose something, they have no idea where to look for it. But I know where to look for things when I can In find the fridge. <laughs> Car keys in the fridge. And, and your other uh, contrast is that you come down regularly in training and competition from four or five meters high, but you're very bad with heights on a stepladder. Is that true? Yes. Uh, I am a little scared of heights. Uh, I go up, now I have worked on up to like the fourth step of the ladder. I'm getting a little better, but once I start thinking about it, I freak out, I get nauseous, so everything that's related to being scared of heights. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, can we uh, just take you back to, to Rio? I, I know it was a nightmare experience for you. Just talk us through exactly what happened and how long it took you to, to come back from it. You're going well again now, but it was a very dark time for you, wasn't it? Yes, um, it's amazing how in 212 it can be the top peak of my athletic performance in pole vault, and four years later, the absolute worst. Um, but it's something that I'm still looking at, like what did I learn from this, what lesson came about it, but I got sick basically the second day there and it was complete downhill afterwards and each day was worse than the day before and took probably oh, almost five weeks just to get my body back and it affected my nervous system, my strength, everything. And, and at this time of year, from poles, longer poles, you, you've changed uh, pole composition, have you done all of that this, this autumn or has it just been reconsolidating after Rio? consolidating um, not so much in my technique or the poles I'm jumping on more so the mentality of it like I said in 212 for four years straight I went hard um, preparing for Rio and the next four years I'm not gonna live like that anymore it has to be fun it has to be enjoyable I have to enjoy meets I have to enjoy jumping and for both of you I guess uh, your event is always very popular one it's very aesthetic very spectacular you could probably be competing 12 months of the year couldn't you with the indoor season there's uh, events already taking place outdoors in South Africa and, and uh, Australia. Do, do you have to sort of resist the temptation to be competing 12 months of the year or how do, how do you ration it? Um, well, Katarina is a born pole vaulter. <laughs> She's like naturally talented and I tell you, she could probably take two years off and come back and still be able to pole vault. It's not riding a bike for me, so I have to do this every day and I have to train and not take any time off because if I do, it looks like I'm just starting for the first time. It's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing. And, and you're from upstate New York. This has always been a very happy hunting ground for you. And this Boston meeting is a, an important one for you, isn't it? I like Boston. Uh, Boston's just a nice town with nice fans. And I come here and I feel like I'm at home. I don't have a lot of pressure. It's a great atmosphere to jump in. The meets run perfectly. And the people in it, I mean, they're my friends. I look forward to jumping with them. And Kat, you're the Olympic champion now. Do you, do you feel any pressure, any expectation to win every one of your competitions now, or were you always a bit like that? I mean, I've always felt pressure, just the pressure I put on myself. I would say I don't feel any more pressure now being the Olympic champion. Uh, I think the reason I've been successful, or more successful, in the past few years now uh, is because I, I started feeling like what Jen is saying about the, the next four years I started having fun again I started enjoying it I have done this since I was 10 so I did have more of a base for it uh, so I think having that and then being able to enjoy it I, I think this is the key to success I was the Olympic Games were founded there and it means such a such a thing to the Greek people. They're always the first out in the parade. Did, did you march? Did you march at the opening ceremony? Uh, no, not in the opening ceremony. I, I carry the flag in the uh, closing ceremony. Yeah. But you, you're able to resist that temptation of being first one out with the Greek team at every Games? Um, yeah, well, we weren't there. <laughs> we 
we tried to avoid going to Rio. Of, uh, we, we competed the second to last day of the game, so we just tried to go a little later. We know it's not the best conditions, not because of Rio, but because of how the conditions are in an Olympic game year, you know? Uh, so we just went a little later and we missed the opening ceremony. Final question from me for both of you. Um, what do you think it will take to win tomorrow? Regardless of who it is, what sort of height? I think we can get close to 16 feet. Jen, you go along with that? That sounds good. <laughs> and what, just, just so people know, on the day, do you like it quiet or raucous and noisy when you're, when you're bolting? Noisy, probably. Probably more noisy. Catherine? I, I think noisy as well, yeah. And the fans are great here, and I think they they do like the pole vault and they understand it, and I think they understand the difference of the bar being at 15 feet or 16 feet, and they definitely react different to it, and that's awesome. I, I ask because Reino La Villani likes it quiet, especially if he's really concentrating, he wants the whole stadium quiet when he's going for big heights. And I've noticed both of you two do regular street vaults, you're, you're quite into the music uh, and, and, the, and the feedback from the crowd. Questions from you? Katarina, congratulations on Rio. What was the critical moment or critical place in that competition where you knew that you were going to medal in Rio? You know, I say the story I've never said it before. Uh, at one point in the competition, Sandy came up to me and said, "It really doesn't feel like we're in the Olympic Games." And at that point, I knew I had won. And it was still a 470, and I knew that I had the mentality in every jump that we're in the Olympic Games. You do anything it takes. And the second she said that, I realized I wanted it more. Um, but other than that, I think we went into the meet trying to do what we've done in every other meet. I didn't jump any higher. I jumped in the 480 range all summer last year. So I think we went in um, trying to do what we've done. And I, we actually had a lot of issues the two weeks before coming into Rio. So we just went in, wanted to do what we learned, know, know how to do, and just go with the meet. I mean, I was not winning until 485, so I just had to stick with it. Have you spent time in Greece since the game? So what was it like? Me. Can't hear. Yeah. Well, we go back every summer. We spent about last last summer. I think we spent four months there. Uh, and this year we're going indoor school. We have indoor European Championships. Uh, so we, we spent a lot of time there. But did you get any kind of homecoming parade or anything like that? Have you? Oh, oh yeah, it was crazy going home. I was not prepared for it. My dad texted us when we were still in Rio and told us to try to upgrade our flight. And I was like, whatever. They were waiting for us when the, the airplane uh, door opened. They were waiting for us on the, is it called the jetway? Or, yeah. So it was, it was pretty crazy, like the few days going back home and it was nice and it was fun and I love any interaction with younger kids and trying to inspire younger kids. Some of the journalists I've had some troubles with, but we, we got through it okay. A couple of high school athletes that are going to be in competition with you, being the best in the world, how do you interact with those athletes trying to obviously encourage them to continue on and, and maybe reach the levels that you've reached? I think having high school athletes in competitions, I've always seen high school athletes where they have their separate races or, you know, that's a highlight for all high school athletes, but to have them intermix with us, that's definitely unique for this meet and, and the pole vault. I think it's exciting and I think it's really going to kind of prep them not only for college, but the future and they can see it and be up close with it and actually be inspired by it. I think even just seeing <coughs> other athletes warm up in the mix zone, even I look at them like, wow, that's a good athlete. Sorry. Jen, you've been in three pole vault competitions at the Olympic level, and I kind of describe the pole vault as a really tough chess game. Um, what can you try to describe to us? What, how you make decisions about what height to try to clear, which ones to pass? Um, is that done just at the moment? Is it you and Rick kind of going over things, or how do you approach that? You know, when you enter a meet, you have to know what your goals are, you know, win, place, or show type thing. And for the Olympic Games, obviously, top three matter, and you choose your heights according to that and what other people are doing. Some meets like World Indoors, I didn't really care other than to win that meet, and so my heights were chosen to place in a winning 
form. So it all depends on what your goals are in the meet that chooses that, and then you play off of what other people jump. Based. Where do you train? Uh, I train in Ohio. There is this uh, facility called Spire Institute. It's huge. Not a lot of people know about it. They have an academy they're trying to develop now. And it is, the town is called Geneva, but we live a little west from there. So just east of Cleveland. How did, to the both of you, how did you get into pole vaulting initially? Because I imagine it must be pretty intimidating when you're first walking up and attempting it for the first time. Well, I think we have very different stories here. Uh, both my parents did track and field. They both competed for the Greek national team. And in 2000, it was the first year that the pole vault was, the women's pole vault was in the Olympics. Uh, and just like, just as the Sydney Olympics was ending, my dad was like, oh, why don't you try the pole vault? And he knew federation coaches, he was involved in all track and field in Greece. So we went and tried it, and the very first day, the, the federation coach back then told me, I think you can be good. So I was like, oh, I want to be good, okay. And this is kind of how it started for me, yeah. Um, I started, well, I came from a family of non-athletes, and I was the first one to ever pick up a sport. And it's basically, I ended up playing basketball in college. I went to college and got a scholarship for that, and I started pole vaulting after college. So I started at 22. And that's kind of what kicked off. And I had a coach that said, hey, I think you can be good at that. And I thought, hey, I want to be good at that. So <laughs> that's kind of how mine started. But uh, 12 years after, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Jen, you've got a good I remember the pole vault competition outside Macy's. You were throwing t-shirts further than Mo Green, weren't you? I was throwing t-shirts further than him. So maybe a javelin career after this. <laughs> so both of you, Katharina and Jen, um, it was just a few years ago that, that some people were saying, oh, a woman will never clear 16 feet. And now you have made it kind of part of your regimen. Uh, do you believe that in your careers you'll see a woman clear 17 feet? In our careers? Or how about in your lifetime? Well, definitely in our lifetime, I'd okay. say. I think it's even possible that it will happen in our careers. Uh, I, I, I do think that that is closer to what women should be jumping maybe. I think maybe we have treated women pole vaulters like women and that they shouldn't grip on too big of a pole or shouldn't grip that high or shouldn't do this. And I think now slowly you're seeing the change and I think that's why you're seeing more 16 foot vaulters. I think you're seeing different different body types, right? The, initially there were all these gymnasts that were shorter and smaller and now you have like Jen and like other people that are six feet tall. I'm not one of them, sadly, but it's okay. <laughs> um, but I, I think a little bit the mentality of the event is changing, and I think soon there will be, I mean, I think there's people right now that should eventually jump 17 feet, but I think we'll see it, yeah. Jen, what do you think? I definitely agree with her. We'll see it. There has to be a certain type of pull and grip and speed that has to come in in order to accomplish that. So um, I think, you know, maybe in our career eventually, but lifetime for sure. Favorite events outside your own as fans of the sport? I really like the triple jump, but I'm a little biased. My dad triple jumped. Uh, and I also would say that it's probably my second best. If I had to do something else, I think that would be my, my best event. I would say, I think maybe because I started pole vaulting so young, I am not very athletic. Like, I'm a good athlete, but I can't do other sports very good anymore because I specialize so young. So I think the triple jump just makes me look more athletic than any other. I, can't, I mean, I can't throw to save my life, so it'll have to be a jumping event. <laughs> I definitely would say the high jump. Um, when they get off the pad and then you actually see how high the bar is over their head, that's impressive to me. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to conclude with a presentation of bib numbers and good luck to both of you tomorrow. May the best Olympic champion win.